Saturday's Group 1 Golden Rose at Rose Hill Racecourse has attracted a field of 10 runners, headed by Patnak Farm filly in the Cheetah. RaceNet TV cameras were out at Randwick on Wednesday morning to catch up with all the major players. Very good, uh, very happy with her. Um, you know, uh, she's done very well since the last run and um, she looks a picture and uh, her work's been fantastic. Um, Christian's been coming out to, to gallop her and, and you know, he's also happy. Um, you know, she's drawn a nice gate so we can um, you know, dictate where we want to be in the race, which is great. Um, and uh, yeah, all boxes seem to be ticked. It's the first go at the 1400, John. Any concerns at all? Uh, I don't think so. She's pretty relaxed and tractable in her, in her races, and um, you know, therefore, you know that that um, is in her favour. That um, you know, it's you know, it's not an easy race. There's a few colts here that go pretty good, and um, you know, it's early in the season to be taking them on, but. Um, you know, so far, you know, she's uh, cleared every hurdle that we've put in front of her and uh, it'll be interesting to see how she goes on Saturday. She, uh, last start, she sort of sat a few pairs back, one off the fence. Um, <clears throat> where do you see her on Saturday? Um, well, where we've drawn, we can come out positive and, um, you know, just see how things play out. But, uh, you know, the plan was to be in the 1-1 at Warwick Farm and um, Corey come across and wanted to push in, so we just, you know, ease back to the, to the third pair back. Um, you know, which is good to see, you know, she's tractable and, um, you know, she moved up and put them away, but, um, you know, been, you know, with the draw, you know, a few of Anthony's have drawn wide, um, you know, what they'll do in the run will be interesting, but, you know, the great thing about our filly is, you know, she, you know, she begins well and when you ask her to settle, she settles and, um, you know, we can just manoeuvre to, to be where we want to be. Okay. Form out of the last starts looking pretty good now, certainly on the Philly side. Yeah, well the placings behind her, um, ran the placings again in the surround um, in their second up runs, um, which augurs well for our filly. You know, our filly's definitely come on since that run. She looks fitter. Her blood count says she's fitter. Um, you know, she's just a lot brighter and um, it seems a little bit more switched on. So uh, going into Saturday's race, she probably needs to be, but um, you know, yeah, very happy. After Saturday's race, John? Um, the plan is to, you know, go the three weeks again into the flight stakes, yep. but um, we'll, we'll get through Saturday first. Gay the Golden Rose on Saturday, Cabayan. Cabayan, I couldn't be happier with it. He looks terrific. Uh, his work's been exemplary. Uh, his race in Melbourne was fantastic. It was top class. I can't fault him. I, I think it would take a very good horse to beat him. I, I think he'll win the race. He's, um, he came from off the pace when he resumed. Um, we expect him a little bit closer well, to it. He was up on the speed, uh, Nick, but he, he, he got a slight check after he got about a furlong and a half, and that just put Nolan out of the race a little bit. Mm. Um, but he, he'll be, he's on the speed horse. And That's how he races. He's group one placed over the mile, so he's going to get every inch of the 1400. Oh, he'll get it. He'll get it with his eyes shut. He's fine. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. Anthony Cummings has a two pronged attack in Saturday's Golden Rose. Might start with your song. It was a good second behind Piero in the run to the Rose. Yeah, uh, really pleased with the run. Uh, you know, he came off a short break into there and was not 100% wound up. Um, the uh, taking a nice improvement from that. Uh, he had the others other than Piero covered pretty comfortably in the finish. Uh, and that you know, speaks very well of his prospects on Saturday. Expect a little bit of improvement fitness, fitness wise then? Yeah, I think so. Uh, and we've experiment, uh, experimented with blinkers as well. Uh, and he seems to go, go much better than those. He's always been a good track worker, so he, he works well on them. But just his general demeanour and the way he approaches his work, I think, is an improvement. Uh, and if he you know, shows any sort of improvement at all, I think, on what he gave us uh, two weeks ago, then he's going to be hard to beat. Off the top of my head, I think his uh, second last run was 13 or 1400, so he gets back out to the distance again on Saturday. Yeah, well, as you say, second last run was you know the same uh, track and distance as the, the Golden Rose, so uh, he's certainly adept at the 1400 at Rose Hill. Ninth Legion, Anthony, uh, got home real well in the run to the Rose. Yeah, he did. Uh, ran the same final sectional as, uh, not final, but the half mile sectional as Piero. Uh, and uh, Piero had a clear shot at him. We, had, we were in traffic, had to come back out and around. Uh, so it speaks very well of his prospects. Uh, the 1400 absolutely suits him. You know, he, he's sort of looking, you know, arguably for a bit further again, certainly after this race. So um, the uh, 1400 suits, uh, his runs have been excellent, uh, two runs back since his short break after a good run in the Group 1, uh, you know, finishing not far 
behind Cobain and the group went up in Queensland and uh, off a pretty tough run. I mean, it, I think he spotted in 10 lengths of 12 lengths at one stage and uh, ran into about a length or so. So, I mean, plenty of merit in that effort. Okay. Um, how do you see the race unfolding pace-wise? Oh, no idea. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, I mean, it's pretty tough to work out. Uh, there's no obvious leader there. Yeah. Uh, you've got two horses there that have uh, got blinkies back on, uh, so you'd have, you reasonably expect that they're going to be more prominent. Uh, where that puts them in the scheme of things, it doesn't matter for them. You've just got to you know, see what happens. But, I mean, there could be really good speed. There's a prospect of that, but there's also a prospect of none. So, just don't know. <laughs> the lottery will just spend 10 minutes trying to work it out over there. Um, can you split them? Oh, not really. I mean, it, it's a, you know, the barriers make you lean towards the Ninth Legion. I mm mean, -hmm. um, you know, he's guaranteed to get the right run. Uh, so in that case, you know, from a betting perspective, he's the safer bet. Uh, on straight up track work and, and what we see here, uh, your song has had the edge in him and his track work, but uh, that doesn't always relate to what happens on race day. Good luck. Thank you. But it's, um, look, we're very happy with our own horse. Um, the pace in the race is probably up for dispute. Um, addition of the blinkers of, and pacifiers to Amarino may sort of change that. Um, but we'll just be going with an open mind. We might end up in front and we might just end up in behind the lever. Get an option there from the soft gate and we'll leave it to James to make the decision uh, in the run as to where he feels best the horse is placed. Smallish field probably suits? Ah, oh, look, I, it doesn't sort of matter big or, you know, when you draw that barrier, you get plenty of options to, to make your own luck and we'll definitely do that. Biggest danger on Saturday, John? Oh, the favourite looks very competitive, doesn't she? You know, looks a quality filly, just probably lacks a bit of seasoning, but you can't fault what she's done so far. And um, he's trained well and be ridden well. So, uh, but it looks a nice even race and plenty of quality. Uh, you know, all the runners seem to have some sort of ability. I mean, traditionally, this race is a race where, you know, probably at this stage of proceedings. They only look sort of an even, sort of moderate bunch, but mm. the latter part of the spring might prove that uh, they're all a little bit better. That's the way, that's the way it usually is. Um, John, up to the 1400 for Ashikar? Yeah, look, uh, you know, he's got a little bit stouter pedigree on his dam side, which means the 1400 would probably be better suited for him. He's, he's not a brilliant horse. Um, you know, I think probably 1400 to, to a mile, or probably Caulfield's going to be his pet distance. And um, you know, he, But he's got a lot of improvement whatever he does on Saturday, so we're going to be really chuffed if he can run in the money and, and you know, uh, going forward that'll lay a good foundation. Where does he go after Saturday, John? Well, ideally, we run him in the Caulfield again. He's prelude, um, give him an opportunity to go around Caulfield. I think it's important, you know, uh, stage preparation where he is. I think that will also suit him. Good luck. Cheers, mate.